This episode of Cheat Codes, a sickle cell podcast, is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This episode of Cheat Codes was supported by Agios. Doctors Amar Zaidi and Mike Callahan are employees of Agios Pharmaceuticals. What's up, Cheat Codes listeners? It's me, Dr. Z. And me, Dr. C. What's going on, Dr. C? How you doing? I'm doing good, Dr. Z. I feel like uh, we haven't been podcasting as much as I like, and it's nice to have these guest interviewers. But I miss talking to the folks. Look, man, I, I totally agree with you. But if there's going to be anybody who takes my seat on Cheat Codes, man, I'm happy it's Blaze Eppinger. Because, I mean, Blaze is through and through the voice of this community. He is a king. And, and, and I'm just so proud to share this platform with somebody as esteemed and special as Blaze. Absolutely. And we have a great guest on Cheat Codes today. I say that not just because she's my boss, but... She really is, you know, a very experienced doctor who's worked in clinical development, is now the chief medical officer of Agios Pharmaceuticals. I've learned a ton from Sarah in just a few months, Dr. Sarah Gunes. I really think it's great that we have Blaze doing this episode because I think, you know, you and me doing this, it's maybe doctors who do clinical development and it becomes inside baseball and we talk our language. But I really like the way you know, Blaze has been able to break down with with Dr. Guins in a in a really digestible way how drugs come to be in sickle cell disease. I totally agree with you, man. And I think that, you know, a lot of people ask me why why I made a jump into into the space of clinical development and drug discovery. And and honestly, conversations with Sarah were really the reason that that I was able to make the jump. I mean, spending time with somebody who's as thoughtful as she is about how to approach patients, what the priorities are in drug development, how you really make sure that safety stays at the top of your mind. I mean, she was speaking my love language truly, and um, it's just an honor to work with her. It's an honor to serve under her rule as chief medical officer. I really hope the Cheat Codes listeners get that same vibe, the same vibe that that I got. This is truly a vibe check um, for you warriors out there. I want you to feel what Agios is bringing to the table, and hopefully you'll get that from Sarah and Blaze in this conversation. Yeah, I think it's going to be really important because you have this person in, in Dr. Gunes who is uh, an expert in clinical development and is going to give you a view behind the curtain of, you know, how, how does a drug come to be a drug and what are the steps we need to go through and how, how do we take patient perspectives into account when we're developing a drug and how do we choose, um, you know, what we're going to study? Do we look at pain episodes? Do we look at end organ dysfunction? How many patients do we need? What kind? What's a phase one study? What's a phase three study? So I, I hope uh, warriors are going to learn a lot from this podcast. What I really like about this episode, Dr. C, is that this is the spirit of Cheat Codes and how it was conceived. If you go back to episode four, you'll see Cheat Codes bringing in the voice of Dr. Ted Love from Global Blood Therapeutics. If you go to episode five, you'll hear the voice of people behind a DACVO. If you go to episode six, you'll hear the voice of individuals behind Andari at Emmaus Life Sciences. This is what Cheat Codes is for. It's to bring these people who are working behind the scenes to further the ball down the sickle cell proverbial field. This is this is amazing, and I'm so happy we're going to do this on the Agio side. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We'll see you on the other side. Absolutely. Let's get to it. Hello, Cheat Codes listeners. This is Blaze Eppinger, your guest interviewer. It's an honor today to be leading today's conversation with the Chief Medical Officer of Agios, Dr. Sarah Ewens. My goal today is to get a better understanding of how clinical and drug development works in sickle cell disease. And Dr. Ewens, I appreciate you joining me here on Cheat Codes to help with the chat. Super excited to be here today. To get started, Dr. Ewens, I understand you've been leading IGO's clinical programs in genetically defined disease for the past two years and were promoted to chief medical officer in September. I'm curious to know about your background in medicine, about how you got started in sickle cell disease, and about transitioning into such an important role at IGO's. Do you mind taking a couple minutes to walk me through that? Sure. So um, the first thing you'll hear is my accent. So I was born and raised for the most part in Belgium. So I speak Dutch or Flemish at home, which is kind of like American English and British English, if you think about it. So 
Um, so that's where I went to medical school. I went to the Free University of Brussels, Brussels being the capital of Belgium. And, you know, throughout medical school, I truly liked learning about everything. So I really had a hard time settling down on what I wanted to do after medical school. And so that kind of became a matter of fate because I ran into the chair of neurology in the hospital hallway and he was like, so did you finally made up your mind on what you're going to do? And I said, neurology. So that's how I actually went down on that track. And so neurology is the discipline that really looks at the brain, the spinal cord, the nerves and the muscles. And so that's what I started uh, studying after medical school. And this person, the chair of neurology, he was truly like an amazing physician, an amazing teacher. And as part of the residency in neurology, he wanted us to go to a French-speaking hospital because Belgium is bilingual. And so he basically told us, if you want to be a physician in my division, you're going to go to a French-speaking hospital and you need to be fluent in both Dutch and French. And so that's exactly what happened. He sent us off to this uh, inner city hospital in Brussels. And, you know, it was very intimidating and scary at first, but I am honestly forever grateful to him for forcing us a little bit out of our comfort zone. And I think that is really a place where I've just learned a ton. Um, that's where I got an interest in HIV and AIDS and um, infectious diseases. And as a first year resident, normally you were not allowed on those wards, like on the HIV AIDS ward and tuberculosis wards. But I negotiated time there by going to a ward that nobody wanted to go to. And basically said, I'll go do that if I didn't then allow it on, you know, this other service. And it's in that hospital, actually, also that I rotated through the oncology and hematology ward. And that is where I first came in contact with sickle cell uh, disease for the first time. I mean, you know, we've learned about it in medical school, but the hospital that I was at, um, we really didn't have uh, patients with sickle cell disease, but that hospital did. And, you know... I realized actually this week, for me, the first time I've learned about sickle cell disease that I can remember was in medical school. But my daughter recently, you know, actually this week came home from her high school and they had learned about sickle cell disease. So that was, you know, she came home and started telling me about that. So I was very, um, very excited about that, actually. But to go back to the hospital, it was honestly a place where I've learned so many different things on so many different fronts and, and really started understanding like, it's not purely the medicine part. You, they, it's patients holistically that you learn how to take care of. And I've also learned that, you know, while we, we were taught a lot of a lot of things that are very, you know, black and white, there is a lot that is operated in the gray zone. And so I, I really started understanding that much, much better in that first year. But then I, after that year, I had to go back to my university hospital to complete my neurology residency. And that's what I did. And then at the end of that, skipping forward a couple of years, my husband said, let's go to the United States. I would like to do a fellowship there. And I said, OK. So I ended up writing to the hospital that he was going to go to, which was the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center here in Boston. And I wrote to the chair of neurology there and explained my situation. And then he highlighted a couple of things that I could do. And one of those was an HIV neurology and neuroinfectious disease fellowship. And to me, that was just very unique. And it really brought me back to that first year uh, where I took care of patients with HIV and AIDS. And it, I put all my eggs in one basket, basically came for an interview and then ended up working in that specific hospital uh, in that division. And as part of that uh, transition, I also did a lot of research on a specific disease. So I was doing clinical work and research work and then ended up in a program that was a collaboration with industry. And in that program, we had a lot of speakers coming from industry and they spoke to us about you know, all these amazing therapies that they were able to bring forward for people with unmet, unmet needs in different diseases. And it really spoke to me. And so after completing that program, I decided to transition into uh, industry. And that's what I did. So I moved into a company, first a neurology company called Biogen. And then in 2019, that's when I transitioned into Agios after a former colleague of mine reached out. And I honestly, the company, 
I met so many amazing people at Agios, and then I understood all the different diseases uh, that they were working on and thought, you know, these are all diseases with a true unmet need where there is a potential for a big impact to be made and really change something in the care. And, and then just the people by itself that were working there was truly, you know, we have a, a slogan that is science meets heart. And that's what I felt going through that process. And that's when I moved to Agios. And then I've been leading the clinical development team there since 2019. So that's when I started working on sickle cell disease from an industry uh, perspective. And then I moved along into the chief medical officer role, as you described, in September. And, you know, it's been, it's been a roller coaster. It's been extremely rewarding to be at Agios and to be able to collaborate with everybody. Like our internal team is amazing, but also the patient community that we have been working with as well. So I feel it's, it's been just an, an amazing journey. And then in the role difference, what I've been doing, like when I was leading the, the team of physicians and clinical scientists, now the scope is just bigger and I'm, um, I'm leading the teams, all of the teams that are working together on um, the clinical trials. And I feel very, very fortunate because I think the team at Agios is like a rock star team across the board. And, and it's so it's they're really, you know, driving this journey forward. So it's been a pleasure. You talked about unmet needs. So right now, as we're recording, right, Agios does not currently have any treatments or products that are commercially available for people with sickle cell disease, correct? That is correct. So there are no approved therapies that we have right now uh, from our company for sickle cell disease. And we're currently conducting the clinical trials uh, to research potential treatments for sickle cell disease. So there is not, you can't go to your doctor's office and, and get a treatment prescribed from Agios. Okay, thank you. So let's talk about, you know, these investigational clinical trials. Regular listeners to Cheat Codes have heard the docs talk about clinical trials. But for new listeners for new community members, and for those who just need a refresher. Can you give us an overview of how clinical trial works and share with us anything you are at liberty to discuss about Agios' clinical trial in sickle cell disease? So before a drug can be prescribed uh, by anyone, the therapy really needs to go through several steps in clinical trials. And so in those clinical trials, we are looking to understand efficacy and safety of a drug. So basically the good things and the bad things that a drug may bring. And so that's typically done by testing a therapy against placebo, which is like, um, like a dummy pill that looks the same as the, the actual pill. And nobody knows who gets what until the end of the trial. And that is so that we can ultimately measure efficacy at the end of the trial. Um, that's why we do that. Efficacy. Expound upon that. What does that mean? Efficacy really means like how well does a medicine work? Um, a big part of investigating a potential medicine in the context of a clinical trial is, is really understand that aspect of it uh, and, and really understand how much it does of that. So it's, of course, always balanced with understanding the potential side effects a drug can bring um, so that after a study is done, we can measure all the good things and the bad things and the agencies can across the globe, like the FDA can actually look at that um, and weigh benefits versus risk. So you're not giving people something that's unsafe, are you? Well, so before ever a drug is given into uh, clinical trials, medicines are actually researched in the lab and also in animals. And then after that, there is a process in which a drug gets cleared for use in clinical trials by the FDA and then, you know, similar agencies across the globe. So they're vetted and evaluated thoroughly through that process to minimize the risk. And then from there, you have different steps and different types of clinical trials that a medicine goes through. So the first step is actually typically in healthy volunteers. Um, and so there's a small group of people that are uh, going, that are participating in these studies. And then we first look at how well the medicine does in that context and are looking for a proper dose. And from there on, it actually moves forward to um, you know, patients with a disease in different clinical trials. Now, as we are understanding how the drug works, 
there is always a committee that is looking at this drug as well that has nothing to do with the company to make sure the medicines that are given are safe. And now a word from our sponsor, Agios Pharmaceuticals. At Agios, we are passionately committed to transforming the lives of patients with genetically defined diseases, including sickle cell disease. We are proud of our innovative investigational therapies and are proud to announce that we will move forward with a singular focus on accelerating and expanding our genetically defined disease portfolio. This transformation provides Agios with the resources required to optimize the development of our promising investigational therapies and ultimately enables the greatest overall positive impact for people battling these conditions. The patients and families who are counting on us need extraordinary science, and they also need people with extraordinary hearts. At Agios, we have both. Our work to discover and deliver new medicines is personal. Thank you to our supporting partner, Agios, for bringing us this segment. Agios, where science meets heart. So that's what you're doing currently with Agios' sickle cell program. Figuring out how well a medicine might work and if it's, you know, safe for people to take. Yeah, but it's worth understanding, like, we are doing that. So our trial that we currently have ongoing with Mitapifat is, is Rise Up for Sickle Cell Disease. Now, that medication has gone already in other hemolytic anemias as well. So we did um, do several of these steps on that drug already. Uh, so it went through the healthy volunteer component that I had just described, but it also went through the phase two and three. So looking at more efficacy and more safety data in pyruvate kinase deficiency, which is another hemolytic anemia. And so we submitted that data now for regulatory review. So the agencies are looking at, you know, the, the, the good and the bad that we've observed in those trials. And we also have a program ongoing in thalassemia. So we're building the safety that we know about this drug is actually very extensive because of the work that we have done already with this drug um, up to now. And so we've also already tested, of course, this drug in you know, different uh, clinical trial settings. So the National Institutes of Health and then Dr. Van Beers in the Netherlands, they have trials with patients with sickle cell disease in which we've gathered data as well. So Rise Up is really the, the next big step in the clinical development program. Listening to you talk about all the steps, it sounds like a lot, a lot of work. When you're working on a clinical trial like you guys are currently at IGOs, where do you begin? Like, what's the first thing you have to do? Where do you start? It is a lot of work. It's a lot of exciting work. And where do we start? It's truly a collaboration. I mean, you know, working with the community to get input on how they would like to see the trials designed, working with physicians, uh, working with regulators. Like, we've gathered feedback from everyone before we even put pen to paper. And then when we we continue to develop these trials, it's a continuous circle of feedback between all of these uh, different stakeholders. And for Rise Up, I think, well, as you know, we had advisory boards on this trial and really went before we went to the regulators and after uh, we went to the regulators to gather that feedback from the community and make sure that that was, a, it was addressed uh, in our clinical trial. So it's really... Indeed, a lot of work, um, but you want to make sure that what you are designing as a clinical trial is ultimately going to serve the community and also is going to pass the regulatory bar at the end of, you know, at the end of the clinical trial and lead to a potential approval of the therapy after the regulators get a chance to review. So it is a big team in Agios as well that is working on these um, because after the design of the trial, it's also the running of the trial. And so that's why it's it's a big, big, big undertaking. So yeah, it's where do we start is a, is a big question. It's almost like a circle, a continuous circle of, of feedback. Seems like a lot of work. I feel like I learned a lot about clinical trials, but I, I'm pretty sure I don't know enough to start a clinical trial of my own. That was very insightful. Thank you. Well, Dr. Ewens, thank you for spending this time with me today and sharing the great information with Chico's listeners and the sickle cell disease community. I know I've learned a bit more about clinical trials, IGL's work, and the current state of science in sickle cell. So thank you. Before we finish, 
Any final words you'd like to share with the cheat codes and greater sickle cell disease community? Absolutely. I think it's been so amazing to be able to work with the community on this. And I've, I mean, I've learned so, 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 so much through all of these interactions. So I cannot thank the community enough for helping us out and, and really trying to help us hopefully make a difference. Well, I'll speak for the community and say thank you for all that you're doing and will do. And um, I feel the same way. We uh, we look forward to what's on the horizon at Agios. Thank you so much. Thank you again to Dr. Sarah Gewins, Chief Medical Officer. And thank you to Agios for your commitment to the sickle cell community and for supporting this episode of Cheat Codes, a sickle cell podcast. To learn more about Agios and their work in sickle cell disease, visit agios.com or follow them on Twitter at Agios Pharma. My name once again is Blaze Eppinger. It's been an honor to be with you all today. And now back to the doctors, Mike and Amar, to wrap up this episode. You know, I've always felt pretty comfortable in my uh, job security as a podcast host on Cheat Codes, but uh, I'm not going to lie, man. um, Blaze is making me feel a little dispensable here. Gunning for our jobs. He he might be doing this better than us, man. I've I've learned a few things from Blaze. Blaze, thank you for holding it down, and uh, we appreciate you kicking it a little bit with our boss. This was an exceptional episode. Dr. C, you know, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I think that this was a really good opportunity to let the Warriors understand who is running the programs at Agios Pharmaceuticals. And I hope everybody got a chance to learn a little bit about how clinical trials go and how drugs become drugs from, you know, beginning to when you can use them in the clinic. There's a lot of thoughtfulness that goes into drug discovery in the sickle cell space. And, um, it's, it's nice to work with individuals who understand how special warriors are and what's needed to, to really push care forward in, in this space. With that, Dr. C, let's remind the warriors to subscribe and follow Cheat Codes. Make sure you share this episode with somebody who you think could learn about sickle cell disease or drug development. Follow me at Dr. Z Sickle Cell. And me at Imagineer. We'll see you next time. Peace.